from the time I was born until I was 11, I thought my dad was Superman. And then from 11 to 15, I think I thought he was super nerd. Tag Romney, oldest son of Mitt Romney, says that during his teenage years, he started to see through his dad's squeaky clean, hyper-polished image. Anything your dad does when you're 13 years old you think is uncool. So his jeans were too short, his hair was too neat. Like, whatever it was, it bugged me. And then when I, was, I turned about 16, I think I got through that period and I went back and I knew he wasn't Superman anymore. I matured and understood that he had faults like everybody. <clears throat> but I, I did recognize that he was uh, uh, special, that he was really a good guy. Ann and Mitt would have four more children after Tag, all of them boys. But growing up in a household of five boys was a lot of fun. <laughs> Yay! And when my dad was home, he was right there in the mix with us and get down the floor and wrestle with us when we were young and we were older, he'd play basketball with us or do whatever it was that, uh, that we wanted to do. Oh, this is where I wanted to be. I thought you guys were on no. the side. Oh. The rambunctious troupe also enjoyed quieter moments. Mitt and Ann kept a couch at the end of their bed where the young boys would often come and sit late at night, the whole family talking in the dark. As they got older, the family tradition moved into the living room. The thing that we like to do more than anything else is we all like to get together in a room, a living room usually, late at night, turn off the lights and just talk. Turn them all out darkness and just talk in the dark. You know, talk about whatever. And so now we talk about careers and raising kids and back then we talked about school and where we go to college and all those types of things. And it was just a time to totally be yourself and completely open up and get advice back from mom and dad and from other brothers. And so that was, that was, was one of my favorite memories growing up. We still do it now whenever we're together. We all like to get together in a room when all the grandkids are in bed and just talk. We call my mom the great mitt stabilizer. Tag says that his dad has always put their mother Anne on a pedestal. When they were dating, Mitt idealized her. Some of that reverence was reflected later on in one of the golden rules of the Romney household. But there was one rule that was not breakable, according to my dad, and that was you do not disrespect your mother. And so we were not allowed to ever say anything negative about my mother, talk back to her, uh, be, you know, do anything that would that would not be uh, respectful of her, and that was the one rule that was enforced immediately. Mitt's attachment to his wife deepened even further when Anne was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. In 1997, Anne began experiencing tingling in her right leg. She was having difficulty climbing stairs, and a numbness had crept up her torso. At first, the Romneys thought she just had a virus or a pinched nerve, but their family physician urged them to see a neurologist. I came into his office and wondered, you know, what does a neurologist deal with? What kinds of conditions might this be? And as we sat in his waiting room, there were a series of brochures, either on a wall rack or on the table, I don't recall which, but the, the brochures included Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS, and, and, and multiple sclerosis. And there weren't many other brochures there. That was basically what he was dealing with. And of course, it was very frightening. The doctor performed numerous tests on Anne. She was unable to feel certain pinpricks and lost her balance when her eyes were closed. It became clear that Anne had something serious, even before the test results would confirm that it was multiple sclerosis. Uh, we both became quite emotional and uh, expressed our affection for each other and, and, uh, and said again, we can deal with whatever this is as long as it's not fatal. And uh, I, I don't know how couples deal with a setting which is fatal. And then when I heard that she had MS, I didn't believe it. I mean, I, I just, it's not possible. This is my mom. She can't have MS. She's super, I mean, like my dad was Superman, she was superwoman to me, and she was, I just couldn't accept it. Anne was depressed by the thought of living with the nausea and weakness of MS. She would have a number of attacks, but she managed to overcome them through a mixture of aggressive steroid treatments and less traditional remedies, like reflexology. Also therapeutic was her rediscovery of a childhood passion, horseback riding. She could barely make it around one time without just being exhausted. Um, but as time went on, she got stronger and stronger. And a combination of prayer, medicine, uh, non-traditional medicine and horseback riding got her stronger and stronger until now she has virtually no physical uh, impairment from the MS. She hasn't had a, an episode, a degrading episode since um, probably 2002. 
I think the biggest change for him was him just saying to her, not that it needed to be said, but just saying it, and you don't need to worry about being a perfect, you know, having the grandkids, you know, having meals cooked for all the grandkids and buying them all presents all the time and getting cards. You don't need to worry about all that. And, you know, we, I, can ha- I can help you with that stuff. That just for her it was like, oh, it's okay if I'm sick. It's okay if I deal with me and try to get myself better. When he came, came home, just being there with the family, that's how he blows It's still how he blows off steam. He likes to spend time with the family. To us, he was just dad. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't a business guy. He wasn't a politician. He was dad.